Hello everybody, Wolfpack345 here, and welcome back to some more U-Boat. It's been quite a while since I last played U-Boat, and in that time, there's been quite a few new patches to roll out for the game. Uh, a lot of these patches include new ships, uh, a new manual targeting system, bug fixes galore, and then all sorts of other smaller things. They've also added mod support, and as you can see, <laughs> I already have a mod enabled, which changes just the U-Boat skin. I really just wanted to showcase some mods in this episode, so you will be seeing some of those as well. Let's go ahead and bring up the UI here. Most of the mods I am using are graphical, just changing textures here and there, like the wood, uh, the torpedo icons are slightly different as well, so I can kind of tell at a glance what is what. The only gameplay related mod I have is a mod that increases dive times and makes them slightly more on par with reality. I've noticed sometimes uh, it took forever to dive in this game uh, when the average dive time for a Type 7 boat was around 30-ish seconds, give or take. So uh, this mod brings it more in line with that. Also, that mod does change discipline a little bit, so it's not as uh, annoying to manage, quite frankly. But we are setting sail in U552 here. We just departed Willemshaven. Let's take a look here. Yep, as you can see, we just departed Willemshaven. We're currently transiting the, transiting the North Sea and heading into Grid AE up here. Our uh, secondary objective is to sink 10,000 tons of uh, merchant shipping. And we also have a war correspondent on board down here who is uh, asking questions and such for his publication, and I'll showcase that in a second. So it's kind of like a DAS boat type of thing. Uh, we'll go ahead and get this fellow since he's asleep. Let's wake him up and uh, let's ask Peter. What's going What's going on, buddy? Peter Miller seems confused about something. Suddenly he reaches out and asks Jurgen, why is there a second periscope in the control room? All right, so why? what is that periscope in the control room for? Uh, this periscope is meant for torpedo solutions. Oh, well, that's not true. Uh, this periscope is better for spotting aircraft and for navigation. Well, it is called uh, an observation scope, so that makes a lot of sense. Or we can just say uh, this information is classified. Well, we're going to say it's better for spotting aircraft and such. Um, all right, he thanks me. Glad to be of service. So, yeah, the observation scope here is better for spotting aircraft and such. And uh, like you said, navigation. Uh, the scope in the conning tower here is for uh, computing torpedo attacks and the like. I don't think that's too classified. Might as well, might as well tell them. Let the people uh, have a small glimpse into what it's like to be on board a U-boat, I suppose. Uh, but yeah, it's kind of cool. It's a nifty new feature, and uh, this is indeed new. But other than that, we're just hanging out. Let's go ahead and uh, see. Move some of this food into the galley while we're thinking about it. There we go and then we should have uh, varied dishes and such. Well, in any case, we'll transit the North Sea and I'll keep you guys updated on our progress and uh, let you know how things go. Well, we have successfully made it to our destination here in Sector AE and uh, now it's time to come up with a decent patrol pattern. I'm thinking we'll head over closer towards Iceland, actually, something like this, and then we'll, we'll uh, patrol kind of in the North Atlantic over here. I think we might have better luck than uh, transiting way up here towards the Greenland Sea. Well, that's the plan anyway, and we'll do a quick and dirty just search pattern like so, and, and attempt to uh, find some merchant ships here, and we will obviously begin doing periodic dives and checking hydrophones to see if we can hear any merchant ships on the surface. We also have an alert from uh, uh, Peter, I think his name's, I and mean, we are in a pretty big storm right now, this is pretty nuts, but uh, my watch crew is sticking it out up here, although visibility is pretty much arm's length right now. It might be best to actually go down the periscope depth and give my men a break. Are we getting a morale hit? No, no morale hit from these rough seas. That would be interesting if uh, weather conditions actually affected morale, because in reality, I feel like getting uh, tossed around <laughs> like some, I don't know, potatoes would um, affect morale, but who knows. What's your question, buddy? Peter Miller explains to Jurgen that he wants to tell the public a bit how well-engineered U-boats are. He doesn't want to confuse such matters through 
though, and be credible about it. He asked Jurgen if he could explain to him exactly how U-boats dive to match all the basic facts he already knows. Um, we could <laughs> we could just tell him this information is classified and uh, really confuse him so he can just ponder it forever. U-boats uh, have neutral buoyancy and simply use steers to move vertically. That's a pretty easy explanation, I suppose. I'm going to say there are five ballast tanks on board that are flooded from the front to back during a normal dive. Uh, that seems a little confusing. I, I think that would just uh, confuse them more. I'm really debating. Just, uh, yeah, <laughs> we're going to be a chaotic neutral here and uh, just say this information. What? Can, is that not a valid response? Uh, oh, now now he wants to know. Uh, chats a bit with Jurgen and mentions the last meal was very tasty. Out of curiosity, where is the food stored on the ship or boat? Uh, in the officer's room? Well, it's near the toilet. Well, he thanks me. He seems really curious about that. Oh, I'm, I'm glad you're curious about that, buddy. So uh, we've confused him more and then told him that uh, his meal just came from the vicinity of the toilet. So I'm sure he's very happy with his job now. Everything else on board is just hunky-dory. We can probably turn on our night lights, but uh, the crew seems fine with this normal lighting. Oh, wow. The, the storm is gone. That was fast. Looks like the seas are still pretty rough, though. Okay, we've spotted chimney smoke, and it looks like it's on a nor northern course towards us. All ahead slow. Let's go ahead and send that... Uh, Send a message off to BDU, and let's head south to kind of intercept this chimney smoke. Uh, we have all of our crew on the bridge, so they should be able to spot it soon. This thing is booking it. Five to ten ships? Okay. Um, all ahead. Okay, we are getting a loading screen real fast. Oh, dear God. Destroyers. Oh, my goodness. I'm gonna be honest. I I really don't <laughs> I don't like this. Uh, okay, let's go ahead and drop down to periscope depth rapidly, please. Let's go ahead and get someone. Get on the diving station. Get two crew members there with you. And let's switch over to electric engines. All ahead, full. Let's actually go flank. Get this boat under rapidly. That's a lot of destroyers. I think we're going to disengage from this here scenario. That does not look like my idea of fun. So it's a, a lot of destroyers. What is this guy? B and W class or something like that? There's quite a few flower class Corvettes in the mix there. Yeah, not a fan. We're going to turn away. I'd rather not. Let's go ahead and drop down to 40 meters. And let's get this boat under, please. Alright, there we go, we're going under. Let's go ahead and you, my friend, horse, get on the hydrophones. Captain, go ahead and rig for blue. There we go. Try to keep uh, this morale A okay. There we go. So morale will be depleted in 50 minutes. Uh, too much work from officers. We can go ahead and relieve a few of these men now that we are completely submerged. Alright, everything is hunky-dory. I guess we're not picking anything up on hydrophones. Alright, morale seems to be okay. Fully depleted in two hours. And once we come back up to periscope depth, that'll start going up as well. So everything is fine. Where are you, where are you going, chat? Alright, so we'll just lay low at 40 meters, and we're going to turn away from this task force. Yeah, not not fun. I'd rather not tangle with a whole bunch of warships and get our poor war correspondent killed. That would not make for a good book. So we're going to continue onward and get out of this area, and hopefully they don't detect us. Um, but they might, since we're going fast. I'll head one third. Let's <laughs> slow down a bit. And, yeah, they're heading, it looks like they're heading northwest, so we should be in the clear here. Well, our patrol is complete here. We've traveled the 
required distance. So we are going to head down towards the western approaches and see if we can find anything down here. Hopefully we can encounter a convoy or something, because so far we've only detected that <laughs> herd of warships. And I did not want to tangle with them, especially since we are using a lot of T1 torpedoes, which leave that very visible bubble trail on the surface. So they would have detected those and uh, probably killed us. Do periscope depth just to do a, another hydrophone check, and we've picked up three propeller noises. And it looks like we have a pretty big convoy here, and it's heading towards us. A small group, 7 to 15 vessels. We're going to plot a course kind of in its direction. And let's see, where are you going, my friend? Looks like they're heading northeast. I'll go ahead and draw a line out for their estimated course. Yeah, something like that actually seems very reasonable. So, we have their course. Let's go ahead and surface the boat. Surface the boat all ahead full here. Everything seems hunky-dory for the time being. And we'll go ahead and recharge compressed air and everything in a second. All right, we better go ahead and turn on our pump, get all that water out of the bilges, and you, Bender, let's go ahead and switch the diesels as well. Bender, go ahead and turn on our diesel compressor while we're at it, and begin recharging that compressed air. And the hunt is on. Once he returns back to his station, we'll be able to go flank speed. We're also down to 57% fuel, so we've consumed quite a lot of fuel. I'm thinking our return journey will go through the English Channel to get on home. That'll be interesting. Contrail spotted shit. Uh, go ahead and get on the... Is it heading towards us? Yeah, it's heading straight for us. Let's go ahead and send that report and we're going to have to emergency dive here. Alright, crash dive. All ahead flank. Go ahead and get you on the dive planes. Two men with you. Perfect. All right, everyone. Come on, Stefan. Get down the hatch, buddy. And Daniel. Let's go, boys. We're going to have to go ahead and rig for blue. Yeah, boy. All right. Slowly but surely, we're getting under. Hopefully. Contrail's getting awfully close, switching to electric engines. And we are safely underneath. Perfect. Um, can we turn off our diesel compressor? <laughs> that's not gonna that's not gonna end well for us, our oxygen. Yeah, that is depleting a lot of oxygen. Okay, let's go ahead and slow down as well. And get to you on the hydrophones. Let's get an update on our merchant friends that we are currently hunting. Maybe we'll get an update. Oh, depth charges. All head flank. Hard to starboard. Wow, how did he see us? Okay. Looks like the aircraft dropped the depth charges. Pretty shallow. Okay, we're good. All right, rudder and midships. Slow down. Phew, that was close. That's the contrail way out there. It's a lone aircraft. The propeller noises are not where I anticipated them to be. I'll have to wait for that plane to kind of bugger off. These, that's not the propeller noises I was tracking. I was tracking a large convoy of, consisting of 7 to 15 ships. They're just 1 to 3. Nothing else, buddy? That's it? Well, that's a shame. Maybe they changed course. Propellernoid, there they are. Okay, they're still on track, perfect. Again, quite a few propeller noises. Where were all these ships up here? <laughs> There's a lot of traffic coming out of the Irish Sea. Okay, well I'll continue to track this convoy here. Thankfully we evaded that contrail. That was quite close though. They didn't end up dropping depth charges on me, which is quite scary. 
I'm sure uh, our war correspondent is having a blast right now. Where is he? Looks like he's asleep. Well, I've detected two freighters down here, and we're going to go ahead and engage these guys. Uh, these ships have kind of eluded me for the time being, so we will try to re-intercept them after we attack these two freighters. Let's go ahead and dive down to Periscope Death because they're really heading straight for me. Oh boy, and we need to get that compressed air under control. Yeah, I accidentally overshot this large convoy, but these two freighters will do for our purposes and will allow us to get some practice. Let's go ahead and... Looks like he'll... Actually, let's turn that one off. Let's turn on the electric compressor. No, get, get back here. Turn off the diesel compressor. Okay, let's drop down to periscope depth. Let's get you, my friend. Bender, get on the diving station. And we'll rig, we are rigged for blue here since it is battle station's time. Bounty hunt. All right, yeah, alarm fatigue and too much work from officers is what is tiring them out. Let's go ahead and make adjustments here and let's get horsed on the hydrophones. Now we should be submerged momentarily. Two freighters detected and yeah, they are on a perfect course for a torpedo attack here. Switching to electrics. Perfect. Let's go ahead and close on their projected track. And let's take a let's take a look through the scope. Let's go ahead and adjust our picture here. We have more propeller noises somewhere. There's our freighters. Let's increase zoom. Oh yeah, that's gonna be this is gonna be pretty good. That's a fairly hefty ship right there. It kind of looks like a Liberty cargo. And we have another merchant ship right there. They both are British, which is perfect. We're getting quite a few new contacts here. All right, let's see. Let's go to our map. Let's slow down slightly. Where are all these propeller noises? Oh wow, lots of propeller noises way out there. And uh, some behind us as well. Well, let's see what this guy is. Pirate Tower. Liberty Cargo. I think it is a Liberty Cargo, mostly because of all these gun emplacements here. Oh, I can right click to uh, zoom. It's not letting me lock. There we go, recognize. All right, Liberty Cargo, 7,845 tons of shipping. That's not bad. Let's go ahead and unlock. And let's lock, identify our other friend here. If I can take out both of them, that would be fantastic. Let's write their scope a little bit. Looks like a Empire Explorer. 2K masts and then uh, one king post in the back. Go. Perfect. Let's go ahead and unlock from this target. So I think the Liberty cargo is definitely primary here. Most tonnage. Go ahead and use some time compression and close this gap as we prepare. We can slow down even more as well. I think we'll be well in range to launch our torpedoes. Are all of our torpedoes warmed up? Let's take a look here. Yep, all torpedoes are warmed up and we're launching all T1 torpedoes. So they all have that nasty bubble trail. But we'll have to make do, it seems. And everyone's really where I need them to be for the time being. I don't think we need anyone anywhere else. I think this should suffice. All right, get ready, war correspondent. You're in for a bumpy ride, probably. I'm sure there's escorts, you know, just over here waiting for us. Looks like we'll launch our attack from around probably one kilometer away, maybe even less. Should be pretty good. Let's keep using... Okay, we can go ahead. 
Let's turn off our Richie. electric compressor. Yeah, turn it off. Let's head to our periscope and finish our solution. Oh boy, come here. There she is. Can go ahead and <laughs> zoom out a little bit as well. Let's go ahead and lock on to, there we go, our Liberty Cargo friend. We'll zoom in three times zoom. That should be fine. Let's get a range here. That looks pretty good. Set range around one kilometer. And let's go ahead and get speed. So we start the timer as the bow crosses our crosshair and we really wait for the ship to cross and then we'll establish a speed that way the only tool thus far I'm a little confused about is the course tool I don't know if they're really asking for the course of the ship or the ship's angle on bow it's worded kind of oddly and I'll show you guys momentarily I think this certainly is a Liberty Cargo. Look at all those guns. I definitely want to take this guy out. Uh, the other ship we can take out using our deck guns. But this one, <laughs> I'd rather not get in a gun engagement with him. Quite a few guns. Very awesome ships, though. Although it's a little early for them to come on scene. All right, stop. Set. Speed five knots, I can definitely believe that. All right, now we go to course. Rotate the disc to visually match the course of your target. So I don't know if they're meaning angle on bow. I think they do mean angle on bow because when they say course, I'm thinking like true course. And if that were the case, they're on a heading of what? 075 degrees? But that just does not seem right, so. Uh, this tool is worded kind of weirdly. So I think angle on bow is around 65 degrees. There we go. I think I think that's what that means. Again, I'm really not sure. I haven't experimented with it enough to really find out. So I think they really should change this to an angle on bow tool and give us like just the dial to plug in AOB. But anyway, that's just uh, my personal preference. Better yet, yeah, just give us a, uh, a working TDC completely. So I'm wondering, this ship... And the, uh, the way they're staggered, I'm afraid if I launch my torpedoes at the Liberty Cargo first, this ship is going to take the brunt of the impact here. Let's take a look. Yeah. Interesting. Well, we'll go ahead and fire at the Liberty Cargo and then fire at our other friend here. So let's go ahead and get range one more time. That's the only thing that's really changed quite a lot. Set. Wow, range is still at around one kilometer. Okay. Well, in that case, let's see. Angle on bow one more time. Yeah, he's still at around a 73, 75-ish AOB. Maybe it does mean course. So whenever I... Okay, anyway. Let's adjust this a little bit. There we go. That's whatever. That should be fine. Torpedoes one and two flooded. Speed will set to 44 knots. Depth will be 2.5 meters. Dispersion. We want a very low dispersion rate. All right. Tubes one and two. Oh my goodness! Wrong button. <laughs> and we'll find out. They might hit the Empire Lizard. We'll see here though. Let's go to our map. Yeah, they might actually end up smashing right into the side of uh, Empire Lizard there. 
Uh, yeah. Well, you know what, Empire Lizard? Looks like you're going to eat it. Oh, maybe... No. It looks like one torpedo might hit Empire Lizard. Yeah, right in the bow. Uh, let's see. Is this torpedo going to hit Empire Lizard? Yeah. <laughs> Both torpedoes hit Empire Lizard. Right in the bow. Well, that's fine. Serious damage. Yeah, that's not... That's not going to go too well for her. Well, we'll go ahead and prepare our second salvo for uh, this Liberty Carco. Yeah, I thought that might be a little difficult there. That was my primary concern. Looks like she's taking a lot of water to the bow. And she's going to go down. Unknown group. I'm not seeing anything. Uh, I'm kind of worried about warships coming in the area. Oh yeah, she's going down. Well, we'll keep maneuvering towards this Liberty Cargo. Hopefully she doesn't t change course or speed too much. I have a feeling she won't. And yeah, the Empire Lizard is going down. They've uh, manned the lifeboats. Oh no, don't do that. Continue on our, our course. If not, just change this way here. So we can fire our salvo off. Goodbye, Empire Lizard. Hey, well, uh, that was quite exciting. <laughs> I'm sure they would have; those torpedoes would have hit the Liberty Cargo if she wasn't in the way, but she was. That's fine, though. A hit is a hit. All right, uh, next in line. I, I just don't want my torpedoes to smash into... Uh, Empire Lizard again. But I think we're in the clear. So let's go ahead and get the solution ready. Uh, that is. I just like saying Empire Lizard. What a fantastic name for a vessel. Alright. Range. Looks like she might have sped up a little bit. Maybe we're just closer. So it's still an illusion of speed. Angle on bow. Looks like it's straight up 90 degrees. Set. Everything else seems fine. Open these tubes. Oh, three and four. Speed, 44 knots. Depth will be uh, two meters again. Dispersion, we'll have a little bit of dispersion. 20, six, yeah, we'll do 14 meters, why not? Tubes, three and four. Los. Please? Why are you not firing? Tubes three and four. I don't know why these torpedoes are not firing. Maybe it's because I'm not locked on target. Uh, I guess that might have been it. Two, four. I suppose that was it. I thought I was locked. Okay, tube three flooded. And tube four is now flooded. Tube three and four, loss. Yeah, I wasn't locked on target, that's why. 40 seconds to impact, perfect. Tube four is away. Let's see if we get a hit on this Empire Freighter. It's our torpedoes running straight for the target. 20 seconds to impact. Yeah, these guys are looking good. Let's go ahead and let's watch from this very cinematic view. There we go. Here comes the second torpedo straight on target. There we go. Two very good hits on the Liberty Cargo there. Perfect. That's definitely going to be enough to put her under. The torpedoes explosions look very good in this game. Honestly, all the, the graphics in this game are amazing. Definitely the best looking subsim out there, I think. But yeah, I. <laughs> you imagine getting in a surface engagement with this thing? Oh my goodness, no thank you. It'd be pretty rough. And I'm sure they're abandoning ship. This thing is taking on water mighty quickly. It's a hit! Serious damage, hopefully to the enemy ships. Let's go ahead and. Do you want to get on the radio? 
I don't know if we can send radio messages out at periscope depth, but there she goes, and there are now lifeboats in the water. All right, well, that was an interesting look. Incoming, all right, we can send radio reports. Well, let's go ahead and send those off and get some extra renown here. Let's see, we've almost completed our goal. Lots of propeller noises. What do we have? Radio transmissions. Let's go ahead and decode this and begin the hunt. Now we have lots of groups heading pretty much northeast away from us, but this one is heading northeast and it's at a angle where I can probably intercept it rather easily. So let's go ahead and surface the boat. Surface the boat all ahead full or standard, sorry. Let's get this boat on the move. Wow, the Empire Lizard is uh, being mighty resilient here. Still sticking out of the water in defiance. Did I get that radio message? Copy ten. I guess nothing exciting. Okay, well, I'm going to go ahead and try to intercept this other group up here to accomplish this goal, and we'll see how we do. This other group of merchant ships, and I think I'm going to go ahead and use the deck gun on them. Let's see, how many rounds of ammunition do I actually have on the deck gun? Let's see. What do we got? We have 20, 35, 40 rounds of ammo, and we have 40 rounds in storage, so we can begin loading those up. Maybe we can do a surface attack as well. We'll see. I think uh, doing, showing off the deck on a little bit could be fun. Let's go ahead and close, all ahead full. Let's get on in there. Both of these ships look to be unarmed, fairly small merchant vessels, so. Yep, no guns on board, although it looks like that could be a platform for a gun, but I'm not seeing any guns. And they both appear to be British, so that <laughs> that is important as well. Alright, get me on that gun. There we go. Yes, these guys have been on battle stations quite a lot, that's why they have fairly low discipline. I really don't know how to improve it right now while manning battle stations. The whole discipline thing is definitely the most irritating aspect. I mean, they should not have low miss discipline while deconing a merchant ship. I mean, this is their job. <laughs> Fire on board? Alright. Unknown group. New contact. Hopefully it is not a... They're going down. She's going down. Okay, hold your fire. Hold your fire. Let's hold fire and maneuver towards the second ship. Wow, she did a 180 here. Completely turned around. Understandable. Let's head towards them. And discipline is better now that we sank a ship. The process of sinking it does not make them very happy, I suppose. We'll go ahead and run parallel to this merchant ship as well. Alright, let's go ahead and get on the gun. Come here, my friend. Use the mouse. There we go. Uh, honestly, this aiming reticle is a little easier to manage. There we go. I think we got a hit there. Yep, I certainly am getting hits on the superstructure. It's a little choppy out. Nope, started a fire on board. Another fairly good hit there. And she's already burning. Oh no, that was a mess. Oh boy! Glub, 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 glub. Got a mouthful of seawater there. And this ship should go under fairly easily as well. Master falling over. The ship is. Oh no, we're out of ammo. Okay, well if that's the case, let's go ahead and begin transferring uh, deck on ammunition. There we go. Transfer. And now they're going to have to lug it up there. Who's moving the ammo? Well, 
Well, she might actually be going down without us. Yeah, she's sinking pretty quickly, so I might not need any more ammunition. Uh, you, my friend. Yeah, you go ahead and... Uh, they're moving it. We'll see. This freighter might just go down by herself. She's dead in the water, though. Let's go ahead and all stop. Check the map. Make sure no planes are coming in. And use some time compression. Yeah, her entire stern is... Yeah, she's sinking. There we go. That's two ships destroyed. Alright, let's get out of here. All ahead of one-third. And you, guys, you boys can... Stop manning the gun. Uh, just, just go to sleep. <laughs> oh, they're going to start moving that gun shells. Okay, perfect. Well, that's fine. We'll save them for later. But yeah, that ship is definitely done for. And we have successfully completed all of our objectives. So we're going to head north. Uh, let's go through the English Channel. Screw it. Why not? It could be interesting. It's definitely a shorter journey. And let's get out of here so we're not manning battle stations. And my discipline can begin to go up again. Well, that was quite exciting. Four merchant ships destroyed in the U-552, uh, doing fairly well for itself. So we're going to transit the English Channel and hopefully make it back to Wilhelmshaven A-OK. -okay. Transit through the English Channel was surprisingly uninteresting. Uh, no contacts the entire way, and we've made it back to Wilhelmshaven all in one piece which is uh quite good so we're going to go ahead and go into our little berth here and i have to say Wilhelmshaven looks mighty fine there's also uh i guess i could have shown them there's little locks out here that you have to go through which is really cool but in any case we will be heading into our berth at a nice leisurely speed of five knots Okay, so here we are in good old Willemshaven. Let's go ahead and talk. Captain, this may be, let me know. Oh, I don't want to see you. Let's see. Alright, so I've gained uh, points to the next decoration. So we have the Iron Cross second class. That's exciting, I think. Uh, Schultz. Oh, this is me. Receives the Iron Cross second class. There we go. How about that? We got some medals. We got the Iron Cross first class. German Cross and Gold, we are getting there. And uh, mission summary, so we got 40,000 renown, 100 of uh, this <laughs> thing. Uh, we sunk, we only sunk two ships. Uh, anyway, I guess we sunk the Empire Latimer and the Empire Lapwick. What about the Empire Lizard? Okay, we uh, allowed the war correspondent on board. Everything was hunky-dory. And uh, there we go. Okay, well, that was quite a good patrol for us, I gotta say. Next. All right, and uh, well, that's gonna, that's gonna end this here episode. Everybody leveled up, so I have all that to manage and look through. I hope you guys enjoyed this uh, video on U-Boat. It's been quite a long time since I've played it, so it was nice to give it another look and uh, see how it is progressing. Well, in any case, that's going to go ahead and end this video. Thank you all for watching as always. This is Wolfpack345 signing off, and I'll see you guys on the next one.